Mozambique. Around 25 million people live on 800,000 square kilometers. Much of life is concentrated around the main roads. People need to cover vast distances to purchase and transport goods. In the central provinces, the climatic conditions are hard. In Tet, around 600 millimeters of rain fall every year, but in just two months. The rest of the year, it is dry and hot. Temperatures frequently surpass 40 degrees Celsius. What used to be a forest ecosystem is changing dramatically. Many trees are being logged and shipped overseas, Others are used to produce charcoal that is then sold along the main road. The remaining trees are often destroyed when farmers open up new fields and slash and burn the existing vegetation. The majority of people live from agriculture. Livestock, especially goats, are the backbone of the local farming system. Climate change and deforestation make it ever more difficult for farmers to sustain their livelihoods. Despite these dire climatic conditions, farmers produce a variety of crops and vegetables. Facing these challenges, farming systems need to be made more sustainable. Resources need to be used more efficiently and nutrient cycles need to be closed. I think, as scientists, we are often wrong to think that we can arrive at a community with pre-made, ready-to-use solutions and that people will then enthusiastically clap their hands and say, gosh, thanks for bringing this wonderful technology to me, I will now do as you suggest. I think that we get much better results by exposing ourselves to the specific situation on site, to dig in the ground together, to get our hands dirty with soil, and to work towards a solution together, hand in hand, on a par with each other. The scientist has one type of knowledge. The farmer has his or her knowledge that is nurtured by practice. What was important to us was to develop more knowledge and a deeper understanding of soil processes, so farmers can better integrate the recommendations from extension services and understand, why does this guy tell me that I shouldn't burn the tree? I should rather do other things to open up a new field. We wanted to integrate the agricultural extension as well as the provincial government. We also have partners in the Research Institute of the Ministry of Agriculture. Our approach was to bring together all these different actors. Und unser Ansatz war, alle diese Akteure zusammenzubringen. How do agricultural practices and natural processes relate to soil fertility? To understand this, we needed to integrate farmers' day-to-day -day experience with scientific evidence. A central goal of the training was to improve communication between actors. Information does not just flow top-down, but between all participants. Farmers, extension services and researchers have to accept each other as sources of information. Only then can we address the challenges ahead and develop sound solutions together. We interviewed farmers on the ground. What are the challenges they face? How do farmers try to address them? Farmers have very diverse livelihood strategies and resource endowments. We learned useful, first-hand information and gained a good overview of the difficulties that farming entails in this context. Next, we discussed among the project team members how to best set up a training program. We wanted to provide input, combining local knowledge with scientific expertise and to stimulate discussion about agricultural practices and challenges. We wanted to develop training material that is simple but effective and adapted to the local context. 
we focused on apparatus that is easy to use and low cost. The most captivating thing for me was that I'm in this landscape and suddenly realize, okay, actually, I'm standing in a forest. Characteristic for the soil in Tet is the strong weathering and the alteration between rainy and dry season. During the rainy season, the weathering products are shifted downwards in the soil profile. Clay is transported to deeper soil layers, where it becomes enriched, and this clay-rich horizon works like a bathtub. If I fill it with water, the water stays there. In case of a heavy rainfall event, the field is flooded, the landscape is flooded, and erosion is a huge problem. The trees' job in this forest ecosystem is to perforate our bathtub with their roots. Only then can water infiltrate the soil. Infiltration is the most important process to develop some sort of water storage. Only when it infiltrates the soil, the water can stay in the landscape. You need to prevent the water from running off quickly, from removing soil that is then transported away by the Zambezi. Farmers depend on this fragile ecosystem for their livelihoods. From their feedback, it was obvious their main interest is soil. We set up a two-day training for soil health. Each day started with a theoretical part and was complemented by practice in the field. Um, so, uh, the soil is in between this scheme. So the soil is in the center. We used a participatory approach for the training and actively involved participants at all stages. We combined material that we had already prepared with discussions and with material from the farms. <laughs> In the field, we used simple tools and worked in a hands-on approach. <laughs> the main thing is to develop an understanding how different things are connected in the system, how the resource soil is connected to the landscape, which function soil has in the landscape while at the same time also involving all actors in the system. Actors, plus resources, plus landscape, add up to a complex entity. And by changing just one single factor, you change the whole system. I can hear soil, smell it, see it, taste it and feel it. My senses are my equipment. Using them I can capture many things in the field. And with my senses, that sounds trivial now, I will often be more accurate than modern technology, and I am much closer to farmers' daily routines. That means we work as equals, and my experiences are on a par with farmers' experiences. Thus, we can communicate and explain to each other. Yes, so we have more scent, and I can feel the scent, and I can see it. We visited fields of participants and the group discussed with the field owner about the production, the challenges and the opportunities. We also took samples for later laboratory analysis to support our insights from the field with scientifically sound data. Some results we obtained in the field came as a surprise. These soils do not act as could have been expected from textbook standards. This underlines how important it is to go out to the field. Agricultural extension has to take place on the ground. Advisory services have to be personal. You have to dirty your hands, you have to go to the field. 
I will not enter into discussion easily with an expert that seems unapproachable to me. Now, discussing with somebody who's standing next to me in my field, it's much more appealing. That creates a different basis for discussion, both for the person who wants to understand and memorize relevant information from the conversation, and the person who gets out of his room, his routine, maybe learns something new, something that he would never have learned had he never left his office. Actually, I've never come so close in touch with the people on the ground before, and I think that I've really understood the challenges that they have to tackle in their everyday activities, and I've understood how hard their lives are. For me, it was important to have started a process, and now this process is continuing. I asked one of the farmers whether he could gain something from the training or from the information I'd provided, and he replied quite outright that I need not worry. If he hadn't thought he could benefit from the training, he wouldn't have returned on the second day. And to understand this statement, you have to know that he needs to undertake quite an exhausting journey to arrive at the training. It takes him considerable effort to be able to join. This soil health training was only one building block in our project. Other modules were dedicated to livestock, crop management and more. Setting up and implementing such a training is demanding, but it is a powerful approach that can be adapted to any project.